non-profit, non-government organization in the Philippines, whose objectives are to proliferate peace through mutual collaboration among cultures and to prevent cultural barriers. The organization also aims to contribute to the international development of world peace and to foster peace diplomacy participation, culture, administration, and policy. IPDCI has also partnered with the UNESCO Club of the University of the Philippines Diliman for this event. The UNESCO Club of UP Diliman is a university-based organization that is governed by students who embody the ideas of UNESCO. They also envision to be a premier organization that promotes peace and development by means of facilitating dialogues among diverse groups within and outside the university. The UNESCO Club of UP Diliman is also accredited and a bona fide member of the National Association of the UNESCO Clubs in the Philippines Incorporated. We would also like to thank our peace partners, ABN-CBN News Channel, our official TV partner, Oman Air, our official airline partner, Access Philippines, our official ICT partner, Philippine Innovation Entrepreneurship Mission Incorporated, our official event partner, and our media partners, Manila Times, Manila Bulletin, and Business World. With that said, live from the financial district of Makati, the exciting city of the Philippines, welcome to the 2016 Peace Leaders Congress, the National Peace Diplomacy Chorus of Servants to the United Nations Day. On behalf of the Congress, I have the honor to welcome Mr. Ray Ronjan Martin Alda Rosario, the Chairman of the International Peace Diplomacy Chorus, and I invite him to address the assembly. Your Excellency, the British Ambassador Asif Anwar Ahmad, the members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps present, Honorable Shetan Kumar, the United Nations Philippines Peace Building Senior Advisor, the outstanding youth leaders of the Republic of the Philippines, the Partners for Peace, ladies and gentlemen. The United Nations marks the commemoration among the 26 founding member states on January 1, 1942. In every sovereign state, there is a historical evolution that has affected its contemporary governance, customs, traditions, the flag it honors articulates the sense of patriotism among its citizens. Today, there are 193 UN member states. There are 193 national flags around the world. As global citizens, there should be no divisions among cultures because there is a universal flag common to everyone, which is the UN flag. The United Nations, as a global community organization, is established for the strengthening of humanity despite differences, including temporary disagreements. Like the UN, the blue flag of the International Peace Diplomacy Corps is a banner of hope and assurance. In every day, we can hope to aspire a world where peoples are always united. And assurance we can always envision for the common good of the majority by encompassing the grassroots sector of the society. On behalf of the International Peace Diplomacy Corps, may I convey our warmest congratulations to the outstanding youth leaders in welcoming everyone to Peace Leaders Congress. 
the team activating peace leaders for the United Nations, United IPDCI, is indeed equivocal. I sincerely hope that our commemoration today will encourage more youth leaders to avail opportunities in becoming partners for peace. I congratulate the UN organization on its anniversary and I count on, on its continued efforts to promote Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals. Let us carry forward the essence of open-minded, united, and deeply rooted in shared values. The United Nations remains relevant and powerful as the only intergovernmental organization present. IPDCI acknowledges the full essence of the UN in exploring opportunities anchored to its purposes. IPDCI acknowledges the supreme leadership of His Excellency Ban Ki-moon as the 8th Secretary General over the last 10 years, who came from the regional bloc of Asia Pacific Group. This gathering is IPDCI's gesture of gratitude for Mr. Ban Ki-moon's outstanding commitment to global development in the context of the following areas, women empowerment, human rights, and climate change. He pushed the Sustainable Development Goals towards the expiration of Millennium Development Goals. I am pleased and honored to extend my warmest congratulations on behalf of the IPDCI, the appointment of Mr. Antonio Guterres as the Secretary General of the United Nations. His recent election process signals a momentum of closer shared principles among member states as, as it entails public hearings and consultations. To UN Secretary General designate Mr. Antonio Manuel de Oliveira Guterres, your bold commitment to the welfare of the peoples, your experience and both the highest positions on national and international levels, vision of effective multilateral dialogues, you are indeed the most suited diplomat for everyone. IPDCI will be cooperative to address some of your top advocacies, specifically to innocent children victims of aggression. In the Philippines, we have a colorful president. He is non-conventional, and I believe in his unconventional strategies for the common good of everyone. As the father and elder of this sovereign nation, I am confident that President Duterte will forever be in unison with the United Nations. For as long as IPDCI is present, there is no division. I call it relationship validation for a closer fraternity. He was elected with an overwhelming confidence as the chief architect of the Philippine foreign policy, and his government promotes friendship for everyone and continuously exploring more opportunities in strengthening bilateral ties to other nations. If there are little differences, perhaps the President may consider welcoming fresh faces and youth leaders in his team. I know that the President will choose someone who is objective and truly Filipino. On a personal note, relationships of nations are more than political boundaries. 
It is not about popularity or publicity. I see international affairs more solid on the ground of economic ties. In addressing so, there can be sustainable relationships if there are investments, the exportation or importation of goods allow peoples to appreciate commodities. So, trade and investment, especially to first-timer traders and those who are in the possibility of exploration commercial partnerships should dance the music. Peace is expanded to economic ties, allowing people to foster business relations. It is the most crucial relationship because money or profit becomes the central core. When it is analyzed on a macro perspective, demonstration of values and attitudes may win or lose it, or totally paralyze the whole game. When we have peace as individuals, when the nations are in good state, when the leaders are frontliners, are conscious with the GNP better than GDP, then the basic needs and wants equation can be so possible, perhaps even more inclusive and sustainable. This is why our event partner, the Philippine Innovation Entrepreneurship Mission Incorporated, is taking the lead for the trade and investment facilitation to at least the Middle Eastern region and to West Africa, in cooperation to the Philippines' prime business channel across the world, the ABS-CBN News Channel. Thank you very much for championing the world. Senate President Aquilino Coco Pimentel III conveyed his greetings to everyone. According to him, as we observe United Nations Day, we continue our efforts to seek peace for Filipinos and all mankind. So long as we remain united, we can be confident in fulfilling the dream that has eluded our nation for so long. Peace will come with change. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez extended his message on this occasion on behalf of the 17th Congress. He said, that the 17th Congress believe that we can all be instruments of peace in our personal and official capacities by upholding the rule of law and harnessing the benefits of diplomacy and consensus building. Rest assured that we in Congress shall prioritize legislation ensuring that our people's rights are protected and their welfare vigorously promoted. We are committed to our mission of enacting laws that will deliver to our nation and our people a future better than yesterday and brighter than today. The Filipino leaders in the executive and legislative to conclude joins the celebration of a stronger world in a new era of United Nations. As we start to hear various positions of the speakers, I hope that you will remain steadfast in your interest with the UN, the IPDCI, and may you showcase your allegiance to your respective country. Let me end by saying that in December 11, 2006, Kofi Annan delivered his final speech as United Nations Secretary General at the Truman Presidential Museum and Library in Independence. He shared five lessons which can be summed up as five principles necessary for the future conduct of international relations. According to him, collective responsibility, global solidarity, 
the rule of law, mutual accountability, and multilateralism. He further articulated, My friends, our challenge today is not to save Western civilization or Eastern. For that matter, all civilization is at stake and we can have it only if all peoples join together in the task. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Del Rosario. <laughs> On behalf of the Congress, I have the honor to welcome Honorable Shetan Kumar, Peace Building Senior Advisor of the United Nations Philippines. And I invite him to address the Assembly. Ambassador Randall, uh, Chairman Del Rosario of the International Peace Policy Corps, representatives of Togo, Chile, and the Czech Republic, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and the leaders of tomorrow who are present in this room. Very good morning to all of you. Um, I'll start by sharing a small anecdote from a few years ago. Um, I worked for the UN Development Program about five years ago, uh, the staff union that brings together our agency and a few other agencies of the UN had an informal survey uh, amongst our members as to which country uh, was the favorite country for UN staff members, at least from our agencies, to serve in. And the Philippines ranked first amongst the top five. And thereafter, we had a discussion as to why so many of my colleagues uh, preferred to work here more than anywhere else in the world. Of course, you know, there's no denying the fact that you have some of the most beautiful, natural wonders of the world, beaches, volcanoes, lakes, great cuisine, extremely warm and very friendly uh, people who welcome all of us in your midst. But beyond that, there was another factor. It's a very, very special story, a very special relationship between Philippines and the UN that continues to this day. And so I'll take a few minutes to tell you the story, what this relationship is about, and why it's even more important today than, than any other time before. Uh, as you're probably aware from the reading you might have done, the preparation for this day, Philippines is a founding member of the UN. Uh, 1945, after the Second World War, which impacted this country greatly, uh, Philippines was one of the first countries to sign up uh, to the United Nations. Shortly thereafter, the UN General Assembly started to meet. Uh, there was a surge uh, to establish the rules and procedure for which all the countries of the world will meet every year and talk. It took a number of years uh, for these rules to be established, and when they were finally established, they're still prevails to the state. Every year the General Assembly meets, they still follow these rules. Um, and the person who led the charge of creating this framework in which all the countries of the world talk, meet and talk every year, was a Filipino. You might have heard of him, the Ambassador Carlos P. Romulo, whose uh, family continues in the business of building this relationship with the UN, whose wisdom we still benefit from in the United Nations. Uh, a few years later, in the UN, 1950s, when the UN started peacekeeping missions, peace operations around the world. There were four Filipino staff members who were part of the team that designed the very first UN operation in the Middle East. It was uh, led by an Indian general. Uh, over the years, Filipino soldiers, diplomats, and officials have served in 75% of all UN peace missions that have been deployed around the world and still do to the state. You can find the facts and figures on the website of the Foreign Affairs Ministry of the Philippines. It's a tremendous record of achievement and service. But it's not just service that goes one way. Philippines has been instrumental in shaping many of the doctrines, frameworks, and policies that apply to our peacekeeping work. But going further down the road, the relationship becomes even more interesting, and perhaps even more inspirational. Uh, in the late 1980s and early 1990s, Philippines went through many changes. You know, for some of you, this may have been before your time, but if you're all aware of these changes, uh, Philippines carried out a people power revolution, a democratic revolution, served as an inspiration to other similar revolutions around the world. In Latin America, Eastern Europe, many people drew upon the story of the Philippines. But there was another chapter to the story that didn't happen in the public eye, which was that as these revolutions happened, as more and more people demanded better governance, participation, empowerment, and democracy, Filipino experts were involved in shaping some of the global frameworks. 
some of the documents, some of the policies that the UN adopted. 